weird day today. Yesterday was also a weird and very scary day. Absolutely. Um, it's hard to put into words the kinds of feelings I have. I mean, yesterday it was shocking. The more it sits with you, it's upsetting. Um, even as we try not to romanticize the images um, of, of the U.S. Capitol and the government in and of itself so we can critique it effectively, seeing these insurrectionists, these terrorists, many of them, um, posing in the Capitol building and putting their feet up on Pelosi's desk and the violence that ensued, it was disturbing and then it became angering for me. So in terms of my mood today, um, I'm pretty peeved. <laughs> we should say um, there were four deaths associated at this point, as far as we know, with um, what took place yesterday. Uh, it's unclear what the other three are. We don't have. Um, it we don't seems have. Someone fell from a wall. Um, other medical issues like that. There was only one person who seems to have died from shooting involving uh, security and Trump supporters. There was a woman who was shot dead by um, Capitol Hill police. Um, the video is out there. We're obviously not going to show it. It's very disturbing. Um, they the Capitol Police had barricaded uh, some doors inside the building, protecting members. And I should tell you that I've um, I've had contact with a couple of people who were in that building at the time. And um, these uh, these folks are not wallflowers. I mean, they uh, they have been through similar events in the past. They specifically told me that this was the scariest they've experienced because uh, the police were also terrified, the uh, Capitol Hill police. And uh, the the police, you can uh, find these videos, like I say, online, had barricaded uh, a set of two doors uh, with all sorts of furniture and whatnot. And the um, these insurrectionists uh, were smashing windows. They began to smash the window of one of these doors this woman began to climb through the door and uh, the police officer shot uh, to stop her and she fell back. At that time, it appeared that there were more uh, SWAT oriented police who came up on the other side of that door uh, and tried to provide her with uh, medical treatment. Um, frankly, I'm surprised that there's not there wasn't there wasn't more uh, uh, deaths. Uh, based upon, you know, the video, and you can find um, a video from uh, I ITVS had reporters, I think it's a British outfit, had reporters inside the building. And uh, these, these people went there with the, it appears, the specific intention of doing what they did. You can find video, we'll be playing this over the course of the show, video where uh, they overran barricades um, video where uh, police officers, uh, Capitol Hill police officers were literally trampled upon. Uh, they suffered uh, many injuries, as far as I can tell. Um, I, and I'm, I, I'm sure that the police were terrified. They were unprepared. And it seems completely, completely, completely by design that they didn't take these Trump supporters seriously. If they were Black Lives Matter protesters, as we've now seen the difference in the preparedness of the Capitol Police when Black Lives Matter protests were happening over the, the summer. Oh, they would be prepared to the nines. They would have all the riot gear they needed. They would have all of the preparedness possible. But because it's Trump supporters, kind of one of their own, there's a wink and a nod, no preparedness. And I'm sure they were terrified in the moment. But the reason that they were terrified was because they didn't take the white nationalism seriously that's coming out of these groups. And uh, so... There and, and there's multiple videos out there that 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 at least from one angle show that in some instances, maybe they were allowed to, uh, you know, someone to, they were they were allowed to come through the gates. All of this. The bottom line is it all needs to be investigated there. Uh, the National Guard was not brought out until much later. 
And I've heard conflicting reports on why that might have been the case. There is some suggestion that there was uh, the Defense Department was afraid of putting the National Guard under Donald Trump's authority um, and that they didn't bring them out until they had the ability to talk to the leaders of both parties, including uh, the vice president. Um, This the bottom line is it all needs to be investigated. And uh, one of the themes that you're going to hear today and, and 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 I don't want people to mistake this. I don't think there's anybody listening to the sound of my voice right now or who's watching this who um, is not aware that Donald Trump has been promoting this type of thing for years uh, prior to him even becoming president in the course of his campaign. Um, This type of, 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 of violence was being in one form or another encouraged by him. At his and, rallies in 2015, indeed. encouraging people to punch people. Indeed. And so, but but I, but I also want to say, and, and part of what we're going to be talking about today is the fact that the, the, the leadership of the House has decided to go forward with their scheduled vacation, which frankly, I don't think should have happened in the first place. But put that aside, I don't know. What can convince you that you need to stay in session or at least return to session? I understand people are upset. You take the weekend, return to session on Monday and begin impeachment hearings. I don't know what more could happen where you would have the ability to hold impeachment hearings that would spar them. I mean, you know, do you need the entire Capitol to be burned down before you decide this warrants impeachment? Let's start the day the way that uh, Donald Trump and these people did yesterday at approximately, I don't know, about noon yesterday. Donald Trump has assembled, and again, on social media, it could be seen that there was going to be uh, uh, attempts to do what was done. Uh, There had been warnings about this. The presumption that I think we all had was that there was going to be, because all we have seen in Washington, D.C., with these type of protests, like Emma said, all we have seen has been a, um, an over-militarization. So one would have anticipated that they would have anticipated this. Here's Donald Trump explaining to his supporters. I don't know if this is, I don't know like what more you need. Explaining to uh, his supporters that you have to show strength, not weakness, oh, as they mean? sit agitating ready to, to go into the Capitol. Play this clip number one. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. We have come to demand that Congress do the right thing and only count the electors who have been lawfully slated. Lawfully slated. I mean... If you look at the interviews with people who are inside that building, the ITVS report, you can you talk to people on the outside, they they regurgitate exactly what he just said. We are here to take our country back from these uh, from these Congress people who have stolen our election. We can't see the ballots. We can't see the ba- the voting machines. They won't show it to us. We're taking it back. That is the, a two a person. If you find any video interviewing any of those people at any juncture. That is what they're saying. It's a cult of personality because they are regurgitating everything he does. So when he and Rudy Giuliani go out there on the stump and they encourage violence, what do you know? You beget violence. You get people desecrating the nation's capital, which I get it. We've done a lot of atrocious things in the past. It doesn't exactly stand for roses and flowers and everything like that. But there is some things, there are some things that are sacred but not to Donald Trump's ego and not to the Republicans that enable it because they want to continue to loot the federal government on behalf of their donors and themselves. That's not sacred. I want to play one more clip, which took place just moments after Donald Trump told his people that we are here to stop Congress from certifying the electors and you have to be strong. You can't be weak to take your country back.
and then they uh, begin to uh, uh, smash windows, bust through doors, and sweep through Congress. Uh, we will play more clips uh, as well uh, in uh, in a moment. We're going to be uh, talking to Rick Perlstein. Should just say that um, while the House is on vacation, uh, has left for vacation. Who knows if they will come back or not? Uh, Chuck Schumer has called for two things. One, either the cabinet, including the vice president, to invoke the 25th Amendment and get rid of Donald Trump, or two, in the absence of that, impeachment hearings to impeach Donald Trump before uh, January 20th. We will talk more about that with Rick Perlstein uh, and, uh, and other things when we return. Quick break. Be right back. 